Simo! What's going on, guys? It's Simo, and today I thought I'd bring to you a deck profile. Because I haven't brought you guys a deck profile, I don't think, since Nats. And I think it was like the Blue Blooded Oni FTK deck or something like that. So I thought I'd spice it up a bit, bring you the uh, Burning Abyss deck profile that I took to YCS San Jose. Um, I really like it. It's really interesting because. It's a very interesting crossbreed of the old meta that we were facing, like with Shadal's Necros, you know, Klee, Burning Abyss, all those things, and this new stuff like Cosmo and Magispector that can't be targeted, and a lot of the ways we dealt with the old stuff doesn't really work on the new stuff and vice versa. So it was a lot of fun deck building and kind of like theorizing, like what's the best way to kind of approach this event. And I liked, I really liked my build. I mean, spoiler alert, I didn't do too well. Um, it wasn't necessarily the build. It was just kind of what happened to me in the tournament, but I'll get into that later. Let's get it right into the deck profile now so we can go ahead and show you what i had so starting off i mean we have the standard stuff i mean we have three copies of seer three copies of graph rip three copies of skarm uh two copies of rubik i've said before in my other burning abyss deck profiles i like having two rubik because i like accessing one from the deck and one from grave so that doesn't force you into inoptimal plays if you do decide to make a virgil and it also complements well with uh, alec if you get flying seed because then you can just use that and then summon that out and then make Virgil, and that's a pretty cool, uh, cool way to out Flying C. Uh, one Alec, I really liked it just for the versatility with uh, Fiend Griefing, being able to negate effects. Also, having it under Angoneer or uh, an Acid Golem is really good as well. Something I regret not playing at Nats, actually. Um, one copy of Barbar, Bar, my favorite Burning Abyss. I mean, the 1700 body on this is so good, just being able to crash into Denko or something. But I still burn plenty of people for game with this card, so still amazing. One copy of Farfa. Farfa, I feel like I didn't need more copies of, especially with Cosmo and Magispector. You know, they're untargetable, things like that. But the instances I did need this, Farfa was super clutch. And I'm happy I did run the one. Um, I didn't feel like I needed more than one, though. And then to round out the Burning Abyss lineup, we have one copy of Libic. Uh, Libic is really good, especially in tandem with Mathematician or things like that. Just helps you extend your plays and unclog your monster-filled hands. So it's really good. I ran two at Nats. Didn't feel like I needed the second one. I always wish the second one was a different card. Uh, but I'm... I'm I ran the one, it worked out, and that's pretty much all I needed there. So that's it for the Burning Abyss monsters. Um, the only other three monsters I ran were one copy of Crane Crane, Mathematician, and Tour Guide. Now, I really like this complement here because it's like, you almost have like your... Your opening play, your mid-game card, and then your late-game card. Because it's like... I mean, this is actually like just your all-around good card, though. But, um... You kind of want to see this opening because then more than likely it's going to go off and you can establish a really strong board. And then, like, this is, like, your utility card, like, in the mid-game, like, if you want to access anything from your deck. And then Crane Crane's good because, in compared to Mathematician, this is a plus one. So it kind of allows you to be able to, um, it's another power push card, essentially. And especially late game, like, when people are down on resources, Crane can excuse me, Crane Crane can be clutch. So I was really happy with that, um... Only one time I was disappointed, I opened the Mathematician and the Libic, so that kind of sucked, but outside of that, I was not disappointed. Uh, for the spells, just ran three of them. It was Dark Hole, Foolish, and Regeki. Um, I could, like, questionably, like, that Dark Hole was, like, maybe not the best idea because it's like, you know, Magic Spectres and Cosmo can't be destroyed, things like that. But I like it for the board clearing because then it allows you to set up for OTKs, things like that. It's just good to clear problem threats. And if anything, it's an easy side out card, so it's like whatever. Foolish Burial is your really good utility card, just being able to dump into the deck. Helps making Dante, you know, that much easier, things like that. And then also the Regeki because it's Regeki. I mean, there's really not more else to say about that. Now for the traps, my favorite part of the deck. Starting off with two main decked copies of Divine Wrath. So the interesting thing about Divine Wrath, I just want to show off this beautiful ulti here while I say this. Um, the interesting thing about Divine Wrath is that this is a card that essentially would hit anything in this meta. Like it, if like Cosmo, if they banish Farm Girl to summon a ship, you Divine Wrath it, and then they don't get the summon or anything like that. And that um that Farm Girl is also going to be going to the graveyard as well, so they're not going to be able to get it back. Um, there's it's just this card just deals with so many things. I mean, it's a breakthrough skill that essentially destroys the monster. And with uh, three Skarm Graph and Seer, I mean, more than likely you're going to get some value out of it, and it can just completely it's a complete tempo card. I mean, this. Dropping this at the right time, your opponent's not going to expect it. It's a spell speed 3, so the more they're pretty much not going to be able to respond to it. No one's running wiretap, let's be honest. So, I was really happy with this choice. Um, 
Next thing is two copies of Fiend Griefing. Now, the thing with this card is it kind of sucks because it's like, against certain matchups, it's completely dead, but it's an easy side out in that sense. But I feel like this was still necessary because Burning Abyss, Dolls, Necros are still running around. And just having this to be able to swing their Falco plays or their uh, Ritual Summon, stopping that, or being able to stop their Graphs or Dantes or whatever, this is really, really good for that. So, um, and being able to dump any Burning Abyss, pretty good, pretty good. Uh, next up is two copies of Karma Cut. Uh, like I said, it's a really interesting crossroad where you have to meet with these two metas. And Karma Cut is still really good because it helps deals with Dante's, the constructs. Um, being able to remove threats, just some easy spot removal. Because Divine Wrath, it does require an effect being activated. Where Karma Cut, you can just deal with the problem right then and there. And these were the only other discard traps that I played. And if I went up against Cosmo or Magispect or something like that, I just sided these out. So... I was really happy that I played them. It was a pretty, it was a good lineup for the discard traps. Then we had two copies of Mind Crush. This card is so good. Like, oh my god. Like, Magic Spectre, this card's amazing. Um, Necros is still a thing, so Mind Crush is amazing. You can just really hit anything with this. And the knowledge you gain is so good. I was really happy with the two copies. Really good, um card all around uh two copies of traveler i could have ran three of this but i felt like in testing like that when i was getting three it was opening in multiples and it was just wasn't doing as much as i wanted to so i kind of settled on the two and i didn't see it as much as i wanted to in the tournament or in testing and i didn't really go off like at all with this card i only usually did it for one or two but that was usually all i needed and just being able to just have a free soul charge is pretty nice and then the last uh two of is two copies of time space trap hole now i did a video on this card and how much i advocate for this card this card is so good i mean against cosmo if they summon a destroyer or something, destroyer is one of the biggest pain in the ass cards to deal with. This is really one of the only cards that can deal with destroyer like easily. They might still get the uh, destruction effect, but it's irrelevant because the destroyer is going to be back in the deck. And then you don't have to worry about it. I mean, they have to essentially search it out with farm girl again. So having this, especially because this deck cannot deal with like four or excuse me, a uh, dark destroyer really easily. And just having this is good. Um, there's many other instances where this card came up, like my uh, Necro's opponent summoned a Brio and uh, was going to spin back my two Dante's uh, or downwards. I don't remember which one it was, but regardless of the case, I spun it back and he had no other way to, uh, to get it back. And I essentially won the next turn because of that. And he's like, he was just like, that was, I was not expecting time space at all. And that's the thing. Not a lot of people were expecting anything in this trap lineup to be perfectly honest so that's it for the two ups for the one ups breakthrough i feel like i needed one just because of unicorn and winda things like that that are just lingering or like even uh, vanities or majesty speed i felt like one breakthrough was still uh good to run uh one fire lake i did not run more than one copy of this especially because things couldn't be targeted you could argue with like magic specters that you can just hit the scales, things like that. But um, I have uh, plenty of side for that. And I just felt like you only really needed one of this card. And I had it when I needed it. And it was really, I did not wish I had more or less. Uh, one copy of Skill Drain. This rounds out the effect negation. Mainly, just this card just shits on Magic Specter, and like this, it's card. This card's like if you're running Burning Abyss, like in the new format, you still run this card because Skill Drain is just so good against Cosmo. It sucks. You side this out, but in a lot of other matchups like Necros and things like that, this card is good. Uh, one copy of Warning, obviously, because Warning is just you know Warning. Uh, one teched copy of Storming Mirror Force. A lot of people also didn't see this coming either. Being able to bounce back, like, just complete fields is just... It can just totally swing a game in your favor. Um... I kind of question how good this card really is, though, because it's like, against Magic Spectre or Cosmo, you're giving them back the cards that they're just going to resummon anyway, and then they can trigger the effects. So, I don't know. It was it was good just for having something to protect me from OTKs, but I'm questioning whether or not I would keep playing it. Uh, one copy of Torrential. Again, this kind of falls in the Dark Hole category. I was kind of sided out in certain matchups, but for the most part, it was an okay card. I just like clearing the board, especially if my opponent overextends. And last but not least, one Vanity's Emptiness, because it is degenerate and wins you game. So that's it for the main deck. Complete 40 cards. I'm gonna go into the extra deck here. One copy of Chimera Tech. This card. Oh my god. This against Cosmos. I wish I had two of this because I side uh, Cyber Dragon cores and it came up so many times where I in testing where I wish I had two of this and I didn't. So it was unfortunate that I can only run one, but I'm so happy I ran the one because this card. This is your pretty much your other out to Dark Destroyer. So you need this. You need this. One copy of Virgil. I feel like Virgil is just more of an option, even though I'm running two Rubik. You don't really need more than one. It's kind of like once you make them once, you can always return back with Seer anyway. So it's no big deal in that respect. Um, then moving on from there, three copies of Dante because it's the best card in the deck. Um, kind of happy this didn't get hit on the list, but at the same time, it's like with one Graph and two Seer, it's like, meh. 
We'll see. Uh, triple downward to complement the Dantes, protect them from being, you know, uh, banished, you know, spun back, things like that. One Alucard just to be able to pop back row. I really love using Alucard to bait out back row, even if you're not going to use the effect, because if you just summon some BAs before you go in with your Dantes, this will bait out so many things because they don't want their stuff to get popped. Uh, one copy of Mechquipped because it's really good to push through Valk and also negate effects and protect your guys as well. Uh, one Acid Golem because the 3k body is really good and it helps with the OTK. One Nightmare Shark. I Nightmare Shark actually, I think, two to three people for game and it's just, it's so good. Uh, one Utopic Future. Okay, this card, this card, I would run this in, I wish I did, ran two of this because against Cosmo, it's it, you, it just laughs at them because they can't get around it unless they have a breakthrough skill. Because you can just steal their ships and then just keep attacking them with them. The only way they really can deal with it is putting them in defense mode and just waiting to draw a breakthrough skill to be able to deal with this. But when they dealt with one, I wish I just had a second because getting two Dantes or two Downards is super easy. Uh, one Tri-Edge Levia. This was for if I went off with Traveler just to be able to further establish a really strong board because it's essentially another breakthrough skill on legs. So um, it was good. I never made it. I made it a few times in testing. I liked it. And finally, one Zen Mains. This is kind of like just the out to floodgates um against a ritual beast player he opened macro i think two out of the three games and so i just made this and kind of sat there and just waited for him to uh to do something and i kind of attempted to uh, just pressure him into doing uh plays that he didn't want because he didn't want to lose the macro so that's it for the extra deck there quickly going to go into the side deck uh three copies of majesty's fiend this is for um a myriad of things uh it can use for necros uh should alls mainly because this card just shits on shit alls. Um, just things like that. Uh, Majesty's Fiend is just a really strong card. You can just, you know, get rid of any BA and just summon it. Super easy. Uh, two copies of Cyber Dragon Core, again, with uh, Tandem and with the Chimera Tech. Really good card. Just being able to mill it, and then you can banish, summon it. You get your Chimera Tech out, and if you follow that up with, like, a Tour Guide or something, you should win from there. I mean, that combo is just very deadly. Three copies of Mistaken Arrest. This card actually has a lot of utility because you can use it against, um, it was mainly against Necros, but you can use it against Magispectors, um, just really any deck that searches a lot. I cited it in against Ritual Beast, things like that. It's a really, really, really strong card, especially with Burning Abyss because they don't search uh, nearly as much as they need to. Um, three MST, this is for Pendulums and just uh, back row in general that I don't want to deal with. Uh, three Iron Wall. Now this card... I was against this card initially, but when I started testing this, this against Cosmo, you basically win. Um, especially if you already have a couple Dantes on the field, they really can't do a lot to get around this. Uh, this card, I'm a believer of this card now in this deck. Even though it's a continuous trap, this card is amazing, and I highly recommend running this. And then the last card, I didn't have any. I only had 14 cards in the side deck. I decided to run a Fairy Wind just for some extra Pendulum hate, and I regretted not running it at Las Vegas Regional, so I decided to just run it in. Didn't side it, I don't think at all. I might have sided it in like once, but um, I just was happy with the extra uh, spell and trap destruction. So that is it for the deck profile. To quickly go into my matchups, um, round one was against uh, Necros. It, all my games or all my matches went to game three, by the way. Um, so I uh, pretty much lost in game three because I didn't mind crush when I had the opportunity to. And then um, I had to discard my card for Divine Wrath because he did a play. And then I couldn't mind crush to get rid of the other card. And if I had done that, I probably would have won that. So that was kind of my own fault. Uh, round two was Ritual Beast. He just opened the nuts. Like, he had everything. I had a, I, Game three, I had to bait out the uh, Steeds. And once I did, I made a Dante, and he had Chaos Trap Hole. And at that point, I had, like, one card in hand. So... That was pretty much it for that one. And then um, my round three was against Infernoid. And again, went to game three. He went first, milled Mischief of the Gnomes of all things. He milled his one copy of Mischief of the Gnomes. And my hand was like this. And I'm just like, well, this is pretty much GG right here. And so, yeah, that was about it. So... And that was the end of my career there, but I was really happy with the deck overall. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think about this deck. Um, it's going to be sad now that Burning Abyss is a little bit neutered into the next format, but still love the deck nonetheless. So thank you all so much for watching the video, and we will see you next time. See you next!